You're listening to Secure Freedom Radio with Frank Gaffney from the nation's capital in Washington, D.C. Well, this is a real treat. One of the people I have come to admire most in the world today is a parliamentarian in the Netherlands by the name of Hirt Wilders. Um, You see his name pronounced and spelled in a variety of ways, but I believe that's the correct pronunciation. Um, However you spell or pronounce it, what you need to know about him is he is an exemplar of the kind of courage and I think, vision that's required if we are to save not just his native uh, Netherlands and and Europe, but uh, but the free world, including our own state, uh, the United States. And he comes to us um, on a whirlwind tour he's making, among other things, to promote a new book entitled Marked for Death, which is, unfortunately, what has been his fate for some time now. Hirt Wilders, thank you so much for finding a few minutes with us here at Secure Freedom Radio. Welcome to America. We uh, were talking with our colleague Fred Grandy a short while ago, who had the pleasure of seeing you last night. I didn't, but this is the next best thing, and I'm so glad to have a chance to share you with our our audience. Give us quickly, if you would, kind of a, a state of um, of the European uh, continent at the moment with yeah. respect to this problem that you have been so courageous addressing Sharia. Yeah, first, uh, um, very good to talk to you again, Frank, and uh, thank you for having me on your show. Pleasure. Well, Europe today, indeed, um, is on the verge of uh, Islamization, and um, and people who uh, have traveled uh, through Europe in the last few years uh, can subscribe to that. We have had um, an enormous amount of immigrants, mostly from um, um, Islamic and non-Western countries, and, uh, well, honor killings, uh, genital uh, mutilation, forced marriages, uh, Sharia banking in the United Kingdom, even uh, Sharia courts that are active uh, uh, today, uh, uh, risen crime rates. Um, one example in my own country where we have um, a lot of immigrants from uh, Morocco, 65% of the Moroccan youth have been detained, detained at least once by the police. So the mass immigration and the Islamization of Europe is um, 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 a real threat. And in my, in my book, Marked for Death, um, I try to um, explain to the American public uh, that um, even though we made a lot of mistakes in Europe, that uh, don't think that what is happening in Europe today won't happen to, to America tomorrow and learn from our mistakes. Yeah, uh, This is a point I want to come back to momentarily. Uh, Piert Wilders, one thing that you didn't mention, I just wonder if it's the case in the Netherlands at this point. We're hearing a lot about it in France and I think in other parts of Europe. No-go zones, areas that are effectively under Sharia control that the authorities of the nations dare not enter. Is that something you're experiencing as well as a practical matter, if not de jure? Well, the the no-go zones, I also write about it in my book, the no-go zones are um, everywhere. Um, You see them in France, you see them in uh, Sweden and Malmö, you see them in Essen, in Germany, uh, and indeed also uh, some neighborhoods in Holland where are there where the police is, is not too safe and where most people really don't uh, like to come yeah. um, um, after yeah. uh, uh, evenings. So uh, it is there. It's a, a state within a state uh, in many cities in Europe. Uh, like I said, even uh, active, a lot of Americans don't know that, 60 active Sharia courts in the United uh, Kingdom. Yes. So it's getting uh, worse uh, every day. And uh, the good news is, however, that the people are fed up. This is the difference with a few years ago, that even though the political political elite that is ruling most of Europe now is ignoring the problems and is really not addressing uh, the negative sides of this multicultural uh, society and experiment, that the people are waking up. You see more European countries like that parties like mine uh, get stronger and uh, have uh, a political say. Well, and this is in part a function of the leadership that uh, people like yourself are, are now providing them to express that sentiment, I think. You, it's not been without considerable personal cost to you. Um, tell us a bit about uh, both the physical threats against you that uh, have marked you for death, as they say, but also um, what the Organization of Islamic Cooperation is up to that is creating the conditions under which people like yourself have been prosecuted by your own government for crying out loud yeah that's 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 really incredible well since a year uh, eight years eight nine years ago when i started to talk about um, radical imams and radical mosques and islam in general as a threat to our free society and our freedom of speech the um, 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 the threats um, started the threats 
uh, being marked for death. I was banned from countries. I was put on trial in my own country, as you rightfully said, for three years. Luckily, uh, quitted on all charges. And, uh, well, I lost my freedom, my own personal freedom in the process. Yeah. I haven't uh, walked uh, through the streets of, 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 of anywhere in the last eight years without uh, security uh, detail uh, surrounding me. And I'm not the only one. It's not about me, by the way. You see that everybody in the world, everybody, uh, certainly also in Europe, who criticizes uh, and are honest about the nature of Islam, uh, get the same treatment, whether it's through courts with the legal jihad, whether it's through death threats. Uh, look at Kurt Westergaard or Lars Fields, the cartoonist from Scandinavia. Look at Jan Hirschi Ali. Look at Theo van Gogh my fellow countryman who was murdered and slaughtered by an extreme Muslim in, uh, in the, in the day, during daylight in the streets of Amsterdam. Yes. And the OIC, indeed, is, is one of the worst um, organizations, Frank, that, that exists. They made this Cairo Declaration uh, about human rights in which they say that all human rights uh, are limited to the rights of uh, Sharia law. 57 countries subscribe to that. Um, and um, um, I believe that we should say that we will not accept it and that we should stop uh, having relations and kick them out to the United Nations as long as they subscribe to Sharia law and enforces all kind of terrible resolutions because it's, it's, it's the biggest voting bloc in the United Nations on the whole world. Yes, and, and it is increasingly bending. The Organization of Islamic Cooperation, or OIC, is increasingly, as you know, good builders, bending the UN to its will. And uh, one of the principal objectives of the OIC is uh, this effort to criminalize, not just prohibit, but criminalize the kind of freedom of expression that you have engaged in so so courageously and so properly. Um, speaking of your book, Marked for Death, here I, I want to pick up on something that we've really tried to chronicle as well in a product that uh, we've produced here at the Center for Security Policy. Our audience knows uh, about uh, the Muslim Brotherhood in America. The Enemy Within, uh, available at MuslimBrotherhoodInAmerica.com. You talk about President Obama's speech in Cairo in 2009 in a very dramatic and I think quite accurate way. Give us a sense of, of your takeaway from that speech and more to the point, what the Muslims around the world were intended to take away from it. Well, Frank, I was shocked when um, President Obama indeed in 2009, uh, visited uh, the uh, Al-Azhar University in Cairo, Mm -hmm. a very racist university, by the way. If you are a Christian, if you are a Christian cop, you are not even allowed to study there. Mm -hmm. But uh, besides that, um, President Obama um, said in a speech, he offered um, a partnership between America and Islam. And I was really shocked. I thought, hey, what what, what is happening here? A U.S. president that asks uh, and offers a pact between a religion uh, and America. Uh, Islam, by the way, is not even a religion. I never saw a U.S. president uh, go to the Vatican and uh, offer a partnership there. But more important, um, if you offer a partnership between America and Islam, you offer a partnership between America and uh, Sharia law and between America and the Muslim Brotherhood, who are also founded in Egypt. So this was shocking for me. I'm not here in America to criticize your leaders. I should be modest as European politicians, but this speech of President Obama was so full of misconceptions uh, about the the nature of Islam as a totalitarian ideology that uh, I believe that uh, it proved that uh, your president really uh, needs to learn a lot about the real uh, nature of the Islamic ideology. That at the end of the day, when it becomes dominant, you know, Frank, Islam means um, submission, wants to submit, to subjugate uh, us all uh, in a violent and uh, very unpleasant way. Yeah. Well, I, I'm always mindful, and we have had this conversation many times, that there are Muslims who yeah. don't feel that way. And I think the dividing line is between those who embrace Sharia and it's therefore insist on imposing it on the rest of us, uh, Muslim and non-Muslim alike, versus those who who don't and who, you know, in many cases in this country, particularly here, as you know, came here to get away from Sharia, and we want to try to differentiate the two rather than uh, drive them into one another's arms. Here, we've got to let you go. I appreciate so much your leadership both in the Netherlands and in the free world, and again, the courage that you've exhibited in the face of being marked for death, and 
all of the other um, efforts that have been made to silence you uh, by the OIC, by your own government, by the political elites on both sides of the Atlantic, please keep coming back to us and uh, keep doing what you're doing and um, know that we are very much in your camp and uh, wishing you the very best. Keep up the great work, sir. And next up... We-